So, which of my dad jokes was your favorite this year? Absolutely none. Of them. Oh, come on, man. I insist. Come on, ice in his veins. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> How'd they get away? Oh, there you are. Oh, hey, yo, yo, yo. Hey. hey. No, William, I'm glad I, you got here. <laughs> yeah, we gotta do this. We gotta stop with these secret locations. Oh, it takes you a little while to find. I dropped a pin. Listen, sometimes it gets a little hard to figure out exactly where that pin is, but I do like the place. Yeah. Getting ready for everyone to enjoy Seoul, obviously, with champions coming up. I'm a little bit nervous, but also excited to yes. see how our teams, in particular, of course, are going to perform. I and mean, I'm really curious to see Talon. I have a strange amount of faith in Talon now, but there's also another team that I think has very pleasantly surprised me was DRX. But then, of course, Gen G is still carrying through. But let's not forget, obviously, one of the arch nemesis of Korean Valorant, Paper Rex, right? Continuing to hey be guys. at the top. Oh, hey guys. Hello, kids. Am I late? Speak of the devil. <laughs> we were just <laughs> talking about you. Just in you. time. We were just talking about how uh, unfortunate it was that Paper Rex couldn't close out the best of five. Yeah. <laughs> well, have you guys eaten? I just no, got he here. Just got in. We haven't ordered I anything. I need food for this beer. Yeah. All right, let me try my cream. Chugyo. Best? Uh, close enough. Hey. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> hey, this one's the champion special. How's that sound? Yeah. Yeah. yeah just yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we'll have the whole thing. All right, well, our first dish for the champion special, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's got to be one of my favorite. It is going to be corny, cheesy, spicy chicken feet, or what I like to call Talon Esports. <laughs> Curious how spicy it is. Mm. Oh, mm. it's... It's tasty though. Yeah, this is definitely spicy, like some of the comps and things that they come up with. Just like this, visually it's hard to tell what's going on, yeah. but if it's tasty, that's all that matters, right? <laughs> I think it's safe to say it's not the favorite on the menu. Yeah, it's, it's not for everyone. <laughs> yeah. It's not for everyone, yeah, yeah. <laughs> While I do like shock value for entertainment factor, Shop Valley doesn't always mean a good thing, too. You can be surprised and See, I'm with you on this one. I like yeah. this place. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Sometimes I feel a little lonely in this camp. But what if it's for their opponents? We just had the group draw, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, obviously, with the Vietan now winning in America, they look incredibly strong. It's not just Aspas and friends. Now everybody's really performing well on that squad. As long as it's prepared, properly cooked through, they should have a really good shot, and they've been saving a lot of the secret menu for champions. I think Talon should still be able to get through the likes of Vitality and Trace with the craziness that they bring out, but I also don't think people should be looking at them as the complete underdogs. As long as they are able to jump the hurdle that is going to be Vitality, then I think that they're perfectly fine, because Safe in his own right is also somebody who demands to be talked about, he demands respect. He's been performing incredibly well. The turnaround that Vitality has seen has also been astounding. I think they should just target Lev. The I think opening this, match. Yeah, the opening match. This is, I think, the best opportunity for them. They've mentioned it themselves. They got their own Aspas on their team, or some people are saying that Lev has their own Primi on their team. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, as much as I love Primi and Talon, that's, that, those are some very bold statements. But the rest of the world has always, they've like seen the comments, like Primi this, Primi that. Everyone's like, well, who is this Primi guy? Like Now, right off the bat, he gets to play against Aspas, and then maybe, depending on how the bracket works out safe, like these are some big tests for the guy. And the reason I have faith is Talon and some of these players, they're no strangers to this. Cruz, one of the members that took down Prime Optic. One of the big keys to success for when Cruz did take them down, it was Patty Pan. And for me, can kind of just be like that guy here yeah. in 2024, just that cracked jet player that can just go in and just absolutely take over a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, Cruz not the only one who has international, you know, several international appearances now. Ban, of course, actually got his fair share last year. Clearly, he has really grown from it coming in to 2024, now just flexing onto all sorts of Asian. Let me say this about Ban. He is kind of up and down at times, but when he's at his peak, he is able to take over lobbies. We saw this on Killjoy on Ascent early on in the playoffs, right? Like, he was crying. He was destroying on that map. So I think if he comes in and if he's prepared for these teams, they absolutely are going to shock people. In. There are real barriers, obviously, that they need to get over. However, I don't think it's impossible. And I think the moment they get over those small things, if they can find their own win conditions and their opponents can't, I think that's the biggest strength that Talon has. I wanted to go in a little bit of a different direction for the food that I chose, a little bit more American. I mean, I like French fries, what can I say? But they're, <laughs> but they're cheesy pizza fries. It looks really good. Pizza fries? It yeah. looks a little crazy. It's got... Oh, yeah. This leads me into the team that I want to highlight. A team that's a little messy, maybe a little cheesy, too. Okay. Paper Rex. 
they're kind of off the cuff at times, you know, oh, so it's oh, not raw. Yeah, 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 yeah okay. exactly. Really good hot, but miserable when cold. <laughs> so true. <laughs> also, okay. sauce distribution, once they're like all out of the sauce, it's kind of oh. not yeah. so great, you, know? you, you need it to top. be exact yeah. the same state yeah. for it to yeah, be yeah, great. Yeah, when yeah. It, and if it is, it's fantastic. Like, I'm, I was surprised when I took that first bite. I, I think that this, this is a good metaphor. Um, for the team overall, because we've seen we've seen the ups and downs, the highs and lows of Paper X, not just in this season, but across the run of the season. Then the big change up of Jing comes through, and it immediately looks like they're right back to the, their old yeah. selves. Moments like that are still in the DNA of Paper X. You know, you're trying to go back to the fundamentals, get some discipline back into the system, just introduce your new style of Paper X. But then, when push comes to shove, it's still the old Paper X that comes back out, and that's where it doesn't quite gel, right? It, was it better to just stick with full-on W gaming, just go even like harder past 11, 12, 13, 14 to try to make it better? You're all thinking the same thing. <laughs> I got exactly the reaction I wanted. You're all thinking the same thing. When they do things and they look, it, it looks exciting and it, it plays, it pays off, uh, and they get the wins. You're like, oh my god, they're just mad geniuses. It looks incredible. And then on the opposite side, you're like, why are we still doing the same thing, even though it just worked in the last game? Just like the raise on a set, right? Last year, everyone's like, wow, this is genius. No one else can do this. Obviously, sure, the games changed a bit, but now everyone's like, why are you playing raise on a set? And it's like, I, well, just merely a year ago, we all thought this was crazy good. Now we've seen some games that just aren't quite there with what you expect from Jing uh, as that raise, and even going back to Master Shanghai, he got diff sometimes and that's one of the key things for me coming into this is going up against G2 again the team that they picked going into the playoffs of Master Shanghai oh. <laughs> and he got diffed on raise by Icy but maybe it's not about adding more ingredients to it, but going to the core, which is a potato here, and just not having french fries anymore. It worked in the past, but changes something else. So are you most concerned for Paper X when it comes to G2, or are you afraid of the rest of the group as well? Foot, I think, is really, really strong. When they're really at their peak, they are absolute fraggers. They can go crazy. I mean, obviously, everybody knows about CNED. The other opponent that they really have to be interested in is EDG. We've got new coaches coming in for both squads, right? But going in now with all these changes, I'm actually wondering who's freaking out more. And I don't think G2 is freaking out at all. I was just right? gonna ask, I mean, is that the team that we are the most focused on? I know, I think, I think it has, has to be. Yeah, it has right, it has to, to be. be. Yeah. Right, Valen seems to have a good read on them as the IGL, and yes. that's something that gives Paper X problems. Good and IGLs who figure them out. G2 seemingly shutting down the people who are him on Paper X, like Jing. And who's gonna be at the core of that? It's Valen. I like the joke about fragging IGLs being lackluster <laughs> in America. Valen is that fragging IGL. He is that guy who just can take over a game in his own right. We're talking about Valen being a great fragging IGL, et cetera, but you said it. The best fragging IGL so far this year, Munchkin. Who, do, who does Paper X have the most practice against? Munchkin. Listen, they might not be able to beat him every time, but they've got the best practice they could get against someone who can get reads like that. So I mean, if that's the training you're going through, I think they should be okay. This is kukbap, and this is one of the most staple things that you could possibly have in Korea. It simply just means soup and rice. Nicely mixed together. This is something that's hearty, something that's familiar, something that you've known for a very long time. And I think that it's a solid representation of one of my favorite teams. Oh Talon boy. No, <laughs> DRX, uh, the eternal Korean squad that is finally going to another international competition. They get to close out the year as one of three teams that has made yeah. it to every single champions. So I think that this is a solid representation this of DRX. Party. So nice little mix. You see the rice in yeah. there. Oh yeah. A little so, spicy so paste. I think it's still got a lot of that good stability in there and that good reliability. The key core ingredients are there and it's not too crazy, but yeah, they definitely added a little bit of spice, a little bit something extra just to freshen it up. You know, I think that that's kind of representative of what we're seeing with the changes from the side of DRX because they brought in these young rookies. We didn't know how they were all going to be performing and they've actually been performing incredibly well. Kukpop is also just a term yeah. used for a really steady player in Valorant or just in esports in general. And one of the first players that a lot of fans and us on the Korean broadcast used to reference as, oh, he's the Kukpop of this team, was Mako. Um, but the other veteran alongside him has also been a big part of that, and that's Buzz. He just looks like he's sick of not being top three anymore. He's been with them for so long. I know, but that's really it. We always joke about angry buzz. Yeah. But I think that this is just 
super motivated Buzz. And he is on a war path right now to really redeem this team and get them back to where they once were. And then you have the hot soup that is the broth that is Buzz, right? Mm. He's the one that's really boiling and bringing it all together. And then you have the pot that's the coaching staff, right? Ah, no matter how you scratched nice. up you get from yeah. everyone around the world, <laughs> you just say, no, I stand my ground and I just keep this bowl warm so that the soup can be good once again. So now I'm a little scared to hope again, because I'm like, whoa, this is this, <laughs> this is moving way too fast. Like, this, this is too hot. Too many times. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is too hot, you know what I mean? I just wanted to warm. Like, I mean, well, Cobra. <laughs> if anyone's been burned, scorned, so, let down. But, but guide me into this. <laughs> Am I going to be okay? That's right. That's very true. Alongside DRX, it's Crew and Fnatic, the only three teams that have ever made all champion. And then on top of that, there's Billy Billy Gaming as well, who really have thrown some wild cards out there. They they might be my biggest concern. Oh, really? Because <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. But also, with Billy Billy, you also have Coach Bile who's there. And he does have a very solid Ooh. understanding of Termi because they have clashed many, many times in the past. If you're not worried about Fnatic, they're oh. looking way better now. I mean, of course I am. Do you think the rookies of DRX are ready to face the likes of Alpha Year? I think they learned a lot, not just with Paper X, but going against Gen G, going that far into overtimes, two back to back. And Boaster, this guy who's been playing Smokes as an IGL since time of memoriam, oh. going up against Mako, and no matter which way you cut it, there's gonna be just incredible matchups across the board because Buzz versus Durka is always an incredible one. Oh, yeah. And a Hero has been incredible. It's been He's never been insane. in a losing game. Yeah. Really interesting points is going to be like Bane and Foxy9 on those initiator roles primarily, how they're going to step up against Chronicle, who's been arguably the best player in EMEA this year. It's going to be really difficult for DRX if they run into Fnatic, but I think there's a there's a chance. I mean, this, this team has some kind of magic about them now where they have infinite levels of confidence. All right, well, with that, I'm going to buy into your Hopium and dig in. I want more. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Feast, my friends. Feast. <laughs> Now this tall mountain of glory, stir-fried spicy pork. It is a beautiful dish. This, I thought, was a really good representation of our champion winning team, Genji. It has to be. It has to be. Texture has mentioned it before. Well, not mentioned it. He's eaten on stream, and they say it's his good luck charm. food charm. Yeah. Jayoke, this is, like you said, something the fans really latch onto as well. So whenever he's not playing well, the fans want to say, he's got to get his J.U., he's got to get his spicy pork. But at this point, the kind of momentum they're on back to back, winning all of these events, qualifying every single international event, only in the span of six months with a brand new roster, they don't really look brand new anymore. The only team they've lost to is Sentinels in the final. It's a yeah. team that's played like Max Maps throughout this yes. year, basically. Like, yeah. they have played more Valorant than anybody else, and it doesn't seem to phase them. Yeah, I, I think that the, the one thing that you cannot, at this point, take away from the team is just the endurance that they have. Not even just from the, the player side, but how is it going to go with the coaching staff? Like, but for Gen G, it's, it's even more motivation, because not only have they gotten the first trophy, not only have they been, like, the most successful team globally across this year, they're also potentially the first team to be able to win a Masters oh. into a Champions back-to-back. -back. <laughs> And it's on home soil. So there's so much here to motivate them even beyond what we've already seen. I know, I, I just, I'm so scared of seeing those things out loud. It's okay, we got the anti-jinx right I, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're good, we're coming. Right, that's right. This is, this is, Jinx away. Need some more. So going into the groups, I think it's gonna be a little bit crazy. Let's just call it what it is. It's the group of that. Yes, yes. Uh, it's, it's also just, Teams that Genji kind of has the most history with throughout this year, throughout their run. One thing I've noticed though, sure, they faced against Genji, or Genji's faced against them, and they've been pushed. Uh, but Genji has defeated them all, and I think there is a, a case for revenge. But one thing I've seen is that Genji looks better with every tournament. It just feels like somehow Genji have been the one team globally to be able to remain consistent at the top. Yeah, and Karon doesn't know what it's like to be below second place <laughs> in, in, in any tournament. Which is, what, what is losing? I don't know, losing? But to me, that's what scares me a little bit about Sentinels. To me, Sentinels, now, we, some players might have forgotten what they look like at their prime, but at their prime, they lifted a Masters Trophy. For me, I think it's actually FPX. <laughs> I really? think it was, FPX is one of those really crazy squads that you don't ever really know what they're going to do. Internationally, their game seems to really translate well. I think that's actually maybe the team that could kind of low-key take down Gen G out of nowhere. I'm definitely concerned about Luke, yeah. and I'm sure that Gen G would be as well. That guy 
is, I think, somewhat similar to Texture, where like he can just come online. Like yeah. this is a guy who could just absolutely take over a game in a heartbeat. And while makes this the group of death is that every single one of these teams yeah. are capable of similar things. If Zekin starts showing up, being in that peak form that we saw from yeah. him going to Madrid, I mean, he was rated by a lot of people as the best player in the tournament. Sentinels can also be that team. So that this is gonna be a really scary one. So as soon as the draw show happened, uh, some of the staff, and I think one of the, uh, the GMs of Gen G posted on his social media, he was like, could we just enjoy being champions of Pacific for 24 <laughs> hours? But immediately afterwards, Meteor responds and he says, oh, we can enjoy it after we win champions. This could be the, the most dominant crazy year for an individual team that we have seen ever in BC2. Well, I'm glad that we can all agree that it's going to be a Pacific versus Pacific Grand Finals <laughs> at Champions, right? Uh, hold that. No, put the beers down. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. I know you're on the Hopium. I'm assuming DRX is one of your teams in the Grand Finals. Okay, sure. then who do you have going into the Grand Finals? A battle for the greatest of all time, Gen.G versus FNAF. The winner, there's no dispute. They have accomplished the greatest thing. Look, I don't hate it. I like that as far as the story is concerned, but it's not going to happen. Clinton, oh. uh, <laughs> what do you, who you got? I'm going to say Gen.G, unsurprisingly. Okay. It's okay. hard not to pick them. And I'm actually going to go though? Paper Rex. Oh. Paper Rex. Oh. It would also still be another incredible story. Victoria, how about you? I wonder. <laughs> it's actually crazy we've gotten to the point where it's surprising to pick Paper Rex. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. But not surprisingly, I will pick Paper X. Okay. okay. <laughs> Something's <laughs> jumping. I would like for it to be Gen G, but well, I would I also like even more and have a little bit more faith. It could be Sentinels. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Wow. That would be a great. Well, that would be a cloud grand final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's what? just take two of the biggest fan bases and yes. just <laughs> mash them together. I'm down for it. Hey, listen, I, I, you're looking, you're giving me a smile. We all have different ideas and that's okay because I think we're all in agreement that it's Pacific lifting the trophy, right? Absolutely. Hey. 100%. Wow. Cheers, Cheers to that. that. Cheers. Yeah. All right. It's coming home. But really, if There's it no is, doubt. if it There's is no Gen DRX and it goes to that five, who's winning? I, uh, <laughs> <laughs>